Christians are priests. Someone says, um, yeah, I know, some Christians are priests. No, Christians are priests. The Bible teaches that all Christians are priests. And you're probably familiar with a couple of verses in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, which plainly state, you yourselves are like living stones being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. A few verses down, verse 9, the same chapter, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Christians are priests. All Christians are priests. However, the fact that Christians form what Peter called a priesthood, a priesthood of believers, might not mean as much to you without some knowledge of the priesthood in the Old Testament. And so what we're doing on Sunday nights, we're going through the Bible one book at a time, one book, and we've come to the book of Leviticus. And so tonight I want us to go back and look at, as spiritual priests, as a priesthood of believers, as Christian priests, I want us to go back and look at, look at the priesthood in Leviticus, to look at these individuals who performed a very, very special duty and to learn from them. You know, it says in Romans 15 and verse 4 that whatever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So I think we're going to learn some things tonight that will be uh, helpful to us. Of course, the central place to learn about the priests in the Old Testament is this book the book of Leviticus. The name Leviticus comes from the Septuagint, the, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Scripture, which means pertaining to the Levites. That's what the, book, the word Leviticus means, pertaining to the Levites. And of course, uh, we also know uh, the, the, the family, uh, this is the family from which the priest came, the family of Levi. Actually, the priests who served in the Jewish dispensation came from the family of Aaron, who was a Levite, according to Leviticus chapter, or rather Exodus chapter 4 and verse 14. Levi, as you read this past week, if you're participating in our people of the book reading, you read about Levi being the third born son of Abraham and Leah, Genesis chapter 35 and verse 23. So in the book of Leviticus, we learn about the Levites and their characteristics and duties. And I think as we, we learn some of their characteristics and some of their duties, we're going to learn more about us as Christian priests, as a priesthood of believers. Five very powerful but yet simple things that we can learn about these, these Levites from the book of Leviticus that will help us in our Christian walk. Here's the first thing we learn. First thing we learn is that they came to God's side and in doing so, became his first fruits. They came to God's side and became his first fruits. If you go to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 32, I want to read a few verses with you, beginning in verse 26. This is the story, or part of the story, really. If you look back at the beginning of the chapter of uh, the people breaking down and building the golden calf, Moses had delayed upon the mountain and the people got restless and most of you probably know the story of them building uh, the golden calf and bowing down and, and worshiping in it worshiping it and so when we come when Moses came back down picking up uh, some of the events that took place verse 26 says then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and he said whoever is on the Lord's side Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves to gather to him. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from the entrance to entrance throughout the camp and let every man kill his brother, every man his companion, every man his neighbor. And verse 28 says, So the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses, 
And about 3,000 men of the people fell that day. And then Moses said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, that he may bestow you a blessing this day. For every man has opposed his son and his brother. When Moses stood before the people, when they had committed this great sin, the Levites, some of the ones that were involved in this, when, when Moses stood before the people and he asked this penetrating question, who is on the Lord's side? The Levites were the ones that first answered. The Levites, according to verse 27, or rather 26, the Levites gathered themselves to him. And because they came to his side, what we learn is they also became the first fruits. Now, you're probably familiar with that designation, the designation of, of something being first fruits. The tribe of Levi, for this special service, um, coming to his side, actually grew out of a, an unusual concept of the Hebrew people known as first fruits. If, if, you, if you don't know much about the Old Testament, this would surprise you. you, would, you would, you'd really be surprised as what this means. But according to this principle, the first part of a crop to be harvested was dedicated to God. This is what we call the first fruits. This principle even extended to animals. It even extended to one's own children. You remember just before the exodus from Egypt when God sent the death angel to kill the firstborn of every Egyptian family, he instructed the Israelites to put the blood on the doorpost. Why? That their firstborn should be spared that awful fate. So the firstborn of every Israelite family became God's special property, dedicated to him as a memorial. But as we've just seen regarding the Levites after the incident of the golden calf, because the Levites were the ones who voluntarily returned to the Lord uh, after the worship of the golden image, they then were chosen to be a part of a very, very special service, a service to the sanctuary. And this is the, the replacing of the firstborn of God's representatives of the holiness of his people. How do we know that? Numbers chapter 3, uh, verses 12 and 13 says, Behold, I have taken the Levites from among the people of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the womb among the people of Israel. The Levites will be mine. For all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck down all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, I consecrated for my own all the firstborn of Israel, both of man and beast. They shall be mine. I am the Lord. So, what does that tell us as Christian priests? What do we learn from them? We learn that those who answer the call, when God today said, who's on my side? When those come to him today, they come to him like the Levites did. And when they come to him today, they are called to be his first fruits. Christians are the first fruits of God today. We are God's children. We are his firstborn. We are his first fruits. We are his priest. It's the first thing we see about them. Second thing we see about the Levites, if you wanted to be a priest, you had to be cleansed. They had to be cleansed. A um, Levite's special service to God began with his consecration at about the age of 25. First, he was sprinkled with the water of purification, according to Numbers 8 and verse 7. Then his hair was shaved from his entire body, his clothes were washed, and sacrifices were made of two young bulls and a grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, according to Numbers chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. And then after this purification, he was brought before the door of the tabernacle, and he was set apart. He was set apart for the service by the laying on of the hands of the elders, according to Numbers 8, verses 9 through 15. What do we learn from that? We, we learn that Christians began their service to God by being cleansed, just like they had to be cleansed, just like they had to have the, the washing of the water of purification. Christians began their walk with God by being cleansed. 
the Bible, the New Testament, teaches that everyone who will serve God must be cleansed. He first, she first must be baptized into Christ for the remission of sins, just like we see in the first gospel sermon, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And this cleansing not only forgives our sins, as we know, based on the New Testament teaching, but it also marks our service to God. So we see that not only were they cleansed, but they also are set apart. We just read that, uh, saw that in the book of uh, Numbers, Numbers chapter 8, but also in the book of Leviticus, one of the major themes centers around God's people being holy. This is the idea of them being set apart. They were to be holy just like God is holy. Some of these verses you've heard read so many times, but they come from the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 11 and verse 45. I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 20 and verse 26. You shall be holy to me, for I am the Lord uh, for, for I, the Lord, am holy and have separated you from the people that you should be mine. And so the idea of something being holy, of God's people being holy, the Levites being holy, meant that they were going to be set apart. They were not going to be like everybody else. Be, being holy is something that God expected of the Levites, but remember, we're Christian priests. It is something that He expects of us. But the Levites, though, illustrate this. And this is what's helpful for us. They illustrate how they were set apart among the people. Levi became what was called an Israel within Israel. An Israel within Israel. The Levites camped in the immediate area right outside of the tabernacle, if you recall. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 53. And also, according to Numbers chapter 35, 1 through 8, the Levites had no territorial inheritance. They had no territorial inheritance in the promised land, but they had 48 cities which were appointed to them. So they were set apart. They were different from the others. And I want to remind you that the lesson that we obviously learn here is that we too are to be set apart. The Levites are antitypes christians rather are the antitypes of the levites we learn from them they being set apart that we too should be set apart every person who lives is god's child in one sense we understand that but christians are god's special people his called out we sometimes say that we are his spiritual israel christians are set apart and we're set apart for holiness and service and we are to be like the Levites, and today we are his priesthood of believers. That is something that is not optional. That is something that he expects of each of us. Remember, 1 Peter 2, 9 says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Here's the fourth thing we learn about the Levites, though, and it teach us something today. They were also responsible for the tabernacle going forward. They were responsible for the tabernacle going forward. Remember, before the the permanent temple, there was the tabernacle, and, and it was the, the one that they moved around from place to place. And, and if the tabernacle was going to get moved, if the tabernacle was going to go forward, guess who had to do that? That was the responsibility of the Levites. Turn over to the book of Numbers and look at chapter 1. Toward the end of the chapter, the last three or four verses here, beginning in verse 50. Numbers 1 and verse 50. But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, over all of its furnishings, and over all things that belong to it. Look what it says. They shall carry the tabernacle and all of its furnishings. They shall attend to it and camp around the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle is to go forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall set it up. The outsider who comes near shall be put to death. The children of Israel shall pitch their tents, everyone by his own camp, everyone by his own standard, according to their armies. But the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the testimony, that there be no wrath on the congregation of the 
children of Israel, and the Levites shall keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. In plain words, it says when the tabernacle is to go forward, the Levites were responsible. And today, the tabernacle to us is the church. And if the church is going to go forward the way it should in the sense of succeeding, we are responsible. The priesthood of believers today are responsible. There is no plan B for what happens if the priesthood of the believers won't do what they're supposed to do. There's no plan B. There is only one plan. And it's for the priesthood of believers today, for Christians today, for us to move the church forward. There's one other characteristic that's impressive that we can learn, and it's a good way for us to close our lesson tonight, and that is this fact. The Levites' inheritance was God. The Levites' inheritance was was God. Unlike the other tribes of Israel, the Levites received no territorial inheritance in the promised land. Now they had those 78, or rather 48 cities set apart from them, and they were also given some pasture land for their cattle, according to Numbers 35, 1 through 8, but they received no territorial inheritance. Their inheritance was nothing more than God. God was their inheritance. Numbers 18, verse 20, And the Lord said to Aaron, You shall have no inheritance in the land, neither shall have any a portion among them. He said, I am your portion. I am your portion and your inheritance among the children of Israel. I know it, it's tempting to maybe feel sorry for them, but what a great blessing that they were this special set-apart people to to ultimately represent who god's people would be after his son came into the world and, and and what this tells us is that christians christians don't need anything other than god god is our inheritance christians may not accrue wealth or worldly gain you can but you don't have to and our goals are so different than everyone else in the world all we really need to be concerned about is one inheritance, and that is the inheritance of God, the home that he wants to give to us to have with him. Heaven's really all that matters. What is success? Teach your kids this, parents. Success, real success is going to heaven. That's what real success is. I mean, you can, you can go be something great in this world, but real success is going to heaven and allowing the only thing that really matters to you is to inherit what God wants to give you a place with him and so that is why we read statements like this in the new testament if you then have been raised with Christ in other words if you are a Christian and I understand most of you are here tonight you are a Christian if you've been raised with Christ seek things that are above where Christ is, seated on the right hand of God. Why? Because that's where our inheritance is. If you're a Christian, seek those things which are above. He said in verse 2 of Colossians 3, he says, set your mind on the things above and not on the things of the earth, because that's where your inheritance is. Jesus would tell us that things around here, things on the earth, th th they get contaminated, they get stolen. He said, 